Hello everyone, I'm Brian. Today I'm reacting to recreating a 4,000 year old battery. Was the electricity used in ancient times? So this is kind of interesting. This is just a request. Um, I don't typically, well I do actually react to certain things like this, but uh, what brought, what this reminded me of a little bit was, I remember seeing something on TV a long time ago about ancient Egypt also doing something very similar where they say, they suspect these jars, these clay pots with batteries in it too, which is kind of crazy to think about, about people back Back in the olden times, you know, using batteries. It's kind of crazy. What did they need batteries for? <laughs> I mean, I, what did they need batteries for? Just for, like, excitement? Like, they're shocking themselves or something? I mean, don't. there's no light bulbs. I don't think there was anything that you could... No cell phones back in the day. <laughs> but, yeah, I was kind of curious. It's very fascinating that they're, they're so creative and stuff and... And experimental, very much so back in the day, and um, just all the crazy things they invent that are just so, I guess, what do you call, um, far ahead of its time. Let's go to get started. Super crazy. Dang. Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you the recreation of an electric battery which was used in ancient India. This battery was described by a sage called Agastya who lived at least 4,000 years ago and what I'm making is according to what's being described in the ancient text called Agastya Samhita. This text talks about using an earthen pot as a container and uses two types of metals, copper and zinc. Here I have copper and here I have zinc. That's kind of weird. Uh, well, let's go back to read that. Place a copper sheet in an earthen pot. Put peacock's neck inside. Add sawdust and zinc. Electricity, matri, matra, varun, shakti, will be produced if wires are used. Original verse. Oh, yeah, definitely not won't be able to read the original verse there. Um, hmm. Peacock's neck inside. I was like, Peacock's neck? What in the world? Sawdust, really? Interesting. Zinc I can understand. It's metal, a type of metal. But sawdust? Hmm. Copper and zinc. Here I have copper and here I have zinc. So, this is how the setup looks. If I test this with a voltmeter, you can see that there is no charge. The text mentions that I should add sawdust into the container. Now once I add the sawdust, we can already see some voltage in the voltmeter. This is because the sawdust gets between these two plates and makes sure that these plates don't touch each other or, you know, create a short circuit. But the text mentions adding yet another strange material to complete the battery the neck of a peacock. In the ancient Sanskrit text, this material is mentioned as Shikigriva, which means the neck of a peacock. Many secret cults exist even today, and these people are trying to recreate the battery using the actual neck of the peacock. But this is a mistake because all ancient texts especially those related to alchemy, use code words to confuse the public. Even Isaac Newton mentions using green lying and experts are trying to figure out what he actually meant. In ancient Indian alchemy, the neck of the peacock actually refers to copper sulfate solution, which is what I have here. You can see that both of them have the same color. And 
I'm going to add the copper sulfate solution into the container and you can see that as soon as I add this there is a dramatic increase in voltage. Here it's showing me more than one volt. So you can see that what's mentioned in the ancient text is actually capable of making electricity. Remember, we read in history books that the electric battery was created just 200 years ago by a man called Alessandro Volta. But Sage Augustia created this battery at least 4,000 years ago. But what's really strange is that Alessandro Volta uses pretty much the same materials for creating the quote-unquote very first battery. He uses copper, zinc, and instead of using copper sulfate, he uses sulfuric acid. Now, going back to the ancient text, Augustia says, use 100 containers and you can create a very effective force. Here, you can see that I've used three pods in series and you can see that the voltage increases up to more than 3 volts. Now, if I connect a small LED bulb, let's see if it works. There you go. <laughs> you see. <laughs> that's, so, that's so awesome to discover stuff in the past and to see how how people, well, the fact that things that you don't think exist in the past exist in the past and um, and how how people discover these things. Like, who decided to, you know what, let me put a, a zinc and copper, then sawdust, then sulfur, copper sulfide or something like that? Ah, and then he just touches it, you know, because, you know, who who would have think to put, like, oh, let me put a voltmeter on this thing back in the ancient times. No, they, I'm sure they, they find out the hard way, you know, you know they touch it, like, oh, that, that, my hands feel funny, you know. And, like, and especially what did he use it for? I mean, I wonder if they just, because, again, there's nothing that runs off battery power. Um, so it had to be something that you would not think it would be used for. Generally speaking, you know, people are seeking pleasure or, 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 well, anything really that just makes life a lot easier or pleasure. You know, of course, drugs, salt, and spices were very valuable because it made everything it was so pleasurable for the food. And for this one, well, I mean, you there's no no electronics, so <laughs> I mean, they discovered it, which is great. But what was it used for? A small LED bulb actually glows with just three of these pots. This is a very interesting point that the ancient text mentions using multiple cells in series to increase the voltage. The natural question uh, is, yeah, exactly. why was this used? Why did ancient people use multiple containers to produce high voltage electricity? Did they use it for lighting purposes just like modern days? If so, is there any evidence that the electric bulbs were used in ancient times? In the Dendera Temple of ancient Egypt, there are strange carvings which show the usage of electric bulbs. These carvings were also created 4,000 years ago. And you can see these huge electric bulbs with snake-like filaments inside. What's more interesting is that there are wires coming out of these bulbs and going into a box. Did this box contain Augustia's battery of 100 cells producing 100 volts to illuminate these bulbs? If this is true, this might explain how ancient structures like Giza Pyramid and Kailasa Temple were constructed in such a short span of time. If we visit the Kailasa temple, for example, the chambers inside are so dark that nothing is visible. There is no way to use mirrors or metal sheets to reflect the sunlight into these chambers for illumination. 
but there are spectacular flawless carvings on the ceilings and on the walls inside these dark chambers. Creating such brilliant carvings is impossible with flickering flames of natural fire. How was it possible without the use of steady electric light? If we assume that ancient people did use torches and light from fire for creating this temple and carvings, there should be a lot of soot or carbon deposited on the ceilings, but there's no trace of soot or carbon on the ceilings at all. How do we explain the creation of these brilliant monuments? Is it possible that the ancient people were using battery-powered lights? So I would say like maybe they build it up in layers like the you know they don't obviously everything's not built at once but you can see the was it the pyramids it's built layers upon layers upon layers now other temples I'm not sure and that well and I don't know whether that's true so I'm assuming they built one layer to make the carvings built a layer on top of that but at the same time it'd be freaking amazing and really cool if they did in fact use these things and use it as light I wonder like did they ever find any evidence of like types of bulbs or what? It looked like an electric eel in that picture too. Like maybe if you if you shock the eel enough, maybe you'll 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 you know produce light from the eel. I don't know. It's kind of cruel, but you know, <laughs> whatever way you can get light, I suppose back in the day. How else do we explain this ancient battery mentioned thousands of years ago by Augustia? Augustia actually explained many advanced technical devices in the same book. He talks about battery-powered vehicles. Today, we have electric bikes which use just 24 volts. The text mentions electroplating, which can be done easily with the setup. He talks about splitting water into oxygen and hydrogen and using this hydrogen in balloons for traveling and we do hot air balloon rides today. Interestingly, he also talks about the concept of an electric motor. Now, I've connected five of these cells and here you can see there's enough power to charge a cell phone and we can even run a motor. Now, this is really fascinating because once we realize that these type of gadgets were used in ancient times, we can understand how ancient temples like Hoysala's for a temple were built. I've shown you the machine-made pillars in this temple, and even archaeologists agree that these were made using lathe technology. If Augustia's batteries and motors were used along with the gears and machine tools carved on the Hoysala's for a temple, we can easily produce these machine-made pillars. Now, why did Augustia use earthen pots instead of other items? If he could use metals like copper and zinc, he could easily use these metals, wood or glass, for the container. The reason for using earthen pots is this. It cools what's inside by a process called evaporative cooling. The efficiency of the battery dramatically changes with its temperature, so the earthen pot will keep the battery at its optimal temperature. If these earthen pot batteries were used in large numbers in ancient times, we should have found at least a few of them. Believe it or not, archaeologists have unearthed thousands of these pots in varying sizes all over India. The usual theory is that these pots were used for burying dead people, but they've also excavated many, many pots which don't contain human remains, but have metal plates instead. For example, in the village of Chamaya, several pots were unearthed with copper plates inside them. Archaeologists estimate that these are also 4,000 years old, which matches the timeline of Sage Agastya. Are all these evidences just coincidences? The ancient battery that can light up a light bulb, the electric bulb carved in ancient Egypt, 
carved into the dark chambers of Kailasa Temple with absolutely no natural light. Today's motors running using just five of these cells. And here, I think there's a little bit of a problem there because you gotta understand these are, the things that he's using for modern time are very efficient. LED light bulb is a very efficient um, um, light source. So you gotta think back in the day, it's like they're very, like, was it, uh, we have fluorescent uh, LED, then before that was fluorescent, then we have iridescent, right? Iridescent? Anyway, it's just it's just our light bulbs has become more and more efficient, where less and less power is needed. So you got to think that the, he's saying there's a hundred of those things. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's a hundred of those things to power such a very weak light, but it's still genuinely amazing that they thought of these things. And I'm curious as to what they use as the the light, because I think for um, if I remember correctly, um, light bulbs have to be in a vacuum, and then it makes you wonder how they created a vacuum, or what did they use? If it, if they couldn't create the modern light bulb in in those vacuums, what other technology did they use? I think they can still use it outside of a vacuum, but it'll burn out a lot quicker, and perhaps maybe they use something a little bit more crude that doesn't produce a lot of light, but will last a lot longer. Just again, so many questions, and it's so really cool how, you know. Uh, the, how civilizations back in the day just create so many different things and some of them are just so far ahead of their time and it's just fascinating interesting and just just wonder what makes their brain think it's like what made them try that you know <laughs> machine made pillars of Kuisale's rock temple thousands of excavated earthen pots with copper and metal plates are all these evidences mere coincidences or do they prove that ancient civilizations used advanced technology. Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I'm Prabhu Mohan. Thanks a lot for watching. Please like and share this video with your friends. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Yeah, again, you know, it would be, it'd be really interesting if they even had this in the common, the common people. Because I, I think this would be probably, like, way too expensive for everyone to run, perhaps. I don't know, maybe it is common. And uh, it's just something that they run maybe at night, obviously. Uh, natural light's just so much easier to have, and then maybe during nighttime you kind of hook it up. So you just have a little bit of light before going to bed or when it gets too dark. But yeah, that's kind of crazy. Again, just, just finding out a, like a whole bunch of stuff in the olden times. Again, you can think about like the Wright brothers with the flight. Like, what made them think about flying? Like, what, what, what made them think about mixing those powders together? Or like, the Chinese with the uh, explosives, you know, like, <laughs> like it makes you wonder how many people suffered so much and uh, just to discover something, you know, something so, I don't know, explosive or, or you know, I'm sure there's probably many people that died from, uh, again, the explosives from China. Many And a few people have tried to invent the airplane and many people, there. I think someone did in fact die trying to do that it makes you wonder about people dying from batteries because of like the the poisonous stuff that they're just touching it with their hands not knowing that stuff can seep into your skin and, and give you some type of poison you know so crazy to, crazy at the time discovery period really well anyways that's my reaction to recreating a 4,000 year old barony if you like my content please consider subscribing thumbs up thumbs down down below thanks for watching i'll see you in the next vid